Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization How To. And today we are exploring the best server operating systems in 2024 across specific use cases from virtualization all the way to security. So if you are a seasoned sysadmin or setting up your first home lab and virtualization server, we've got you covered with the top choices in each category. So let's dive right in. As we all know, the operating system is the first piece of software that we install on any set of hardware that we are running. The operating system allows us to take advantage of and use the hardware in a meaningful way. However, operating systems can be focused on different use cases across the board. The first section that we want to detail for the best server operating systems in 2024 is the best server OS for virtualization. Virtualization operating systems are known as hypervisors. They are the foundation of modern IT infrastructure in the enterprise data center. So let's compare the top server OSs designed for running virtual machines and managing data center operations effectively. To do this, I'm going to give you guys what I think are the top choices for paid hypervisors and then open source hypervisors. In terms of the best paid hypervisor, VMware ESXi continues to lead despite the Broadcom shakeup. If you are willing to pay for the features, VMware ESXi really offers unmatched features and a robust ecosystem of solutions and integrations that really can't be matched to the level and degree that VMware offers. But let's face it, the changes for VMware have not been positive. There is no longer a free VMware ESXi hypervisor for download, and the Broadcom support website has become an actual nightmare to find anything VMware related. They have recently released VMware Workstation Pro as a free offering, but this seems to be more of somewhat of a peace offering to disgruntled customers. Thankfully, with a VMUG Advantage subscription, if you want to continue to have a hands-on with VMware products and solutions, you can easily do that for around $200 a year. The next paid hypervisor in the list of best server operating systems in 2024 is Nutanix. With its integrated AHV or Acropolis hypervisor, it's known as the HCI solution, and that has been their bread and butter since the very beginning. It is gaining tremendous ground, especially with recent market changes with Broadcom and VMware. You can get your hands on Nutanix for free, with the Nutanix Community Edition or CE Edition, which I highly recommend if you want to learn Nutanix for future skills and if you are thinking of transitioning from VMware over to Nutanix. Check out my video concerning building a Nutanix home lab, as well as the blog posts that I have written about Nutanix, which I'll have in the description. I've said it many times, if you haven't had your hands on Nutanix, now is probably a time to gain experience in that area as I think we will see organizations continue to pivot away from VMware by Broadcom over to Nutanix. Now for the open source best server operating systems for virtualization. Proxmox VE. It's an absolute favorite right now in the open source community and for home labs. Many who were running VMware vSphere are switching to Proxmox. It now has a new import wizard to easily import your ESXi virtual machines into Proxmox. Proxmox combines KVM virtualization and LXC containers for flexible and a comprehensive virtualization solution where you can run both virtual machines and containers very easily. XCPNG is another open source solution that I think tops the list along with Proxmox of best open source hypervisors. It's built on top of Citrix Zen and I think it has a very VMware-like management experience that allows admins to more easily migrate away from VMware to XCPNG. Zen Orchestra is the appliance and management interface that's very similar to the role of a vCenter server and allows extended management tools and capabilities. It also has a free download and can be installed in the home lab without much effort at all. One thing though I don't like about XCPNG is that you do have to have a subscription to unlock many of the more desirable features like the VMware migration wizard, which you don't have to have in something like Proxmox. XCPNG, if you do want to take your open source solution into production, has a much more desirable support model than Proxmox does currently. Now, the next section that we want to cover, 
best server operating systems for running containers. The world of containers and especially Kubernetes has literally exploded over the past five years or so. I think more organizations are looking to adopt microservices and choose the right operating system that supports containerization. And this has become especially critical now that we see the major shakeup with VMware by Broadcom I think a lot of organizations are looking to containerize and accelerate that journey faster than ever. Here are the top server OSs that I think excel in running containers and orchestrating those with Kubernetes. Talos OS is built from the ground up for Kubernetes and it prioritizes security over anything else and has a minimal footprint. It's one of the most secure Kubernetes offerings I've seen and everything is API driven to run your Kubernetes clusters. You can easily spin up Talos OS on top of a VMware vSphere VM or even in something like Proxmox. Even though it is ultra secure, normally you trade off security in terms of usability. However, that's not the case with Talos and they have really easy processes to stand up your Kubernetes clusters and to manage the solution, which I think is really great. Another operating system to take note of for running containers is Flatcar Container Linux. It's an immutable operating system that offers seamless updates and is optimized for container workloads. So definitely check out Flatcar Container Linux. Fedora Core OS merges the reliability of Fedora with modern features like automatic updates. And it is also an ideal solution for running scalable container deployments. In our next section, let's look at the best server OS for file servers. File servers are an essential component for any business needing reliable data access and storage solutions. We'll look at operating systems that provide robust file management as well as sharing capabilities. Now, I know many are going to hate me for this, but I still think that Windows Server is still the go-to solution for many organizations that are especially embedded with Microsoft ecosystems. Ecosystems. Microsoft Server operating systems offer powerful tools, seamless integration with Active Directory, which most enterprise environments are still running. And Microsoft has also greatly extended Windows Server operating systems and modern versions of those, such as Server 2019, 2022, and the new Windows Server 2025, with strong built-in features and integration with Microsoft Azure. And I think as more and more organizations are moving to the cloud, this is going to become more and more critical. And they're going to look for those integrations with public cloud and on-premises environments, which Microsoft has done a really great job of that integration between Windows Server and Microsoft Azure. Now, I think another great file server operating system is TrueNAS Scale. TrueNAS Core is also great as well. However, I think TrueNAS Scale being built on top of Debian is really an easier solution to use. You don't have as many driver issues potentially with hardware you might want to use. It also uses ZFS to deliver awesome data protection and storage efficiency, and it's perfect for many storage environments. You can download it also for free, run it on bare metal servers, or even even use TrueNAS in virtual machines with pass-through disks for the best performance in something like Proxmox. I also still like vanilla Ubuntu server or Debian server. I think Linux distributions bring flexibility and excellent support for various file systems. It allows you to create Samba shares as a solid choice for many diverse networking environments. You can even put something like Cockpit on top of your Ubuntu server installations and have a web-driven GUI interface to manage multiple Ubuntu servers. Think Windows Admin Center, except for Linux environments, allowing you to manage multiple Linux servers from a web GUI at the same time. In our final section, we're going to look at the best server operating system for security. And we want to spotlight server operating systems that prioritize security, which is crucial for protecting sensitive data and ensuring system integrity in an era of increased cyber threats. Let's face it, we see cyber breaches and random Ransomware attacks on news headlines, it almost seems weekly, if not daily in some cases. Cubes OS or Cubez OS is unique in its approach. It isolates different applications in separate virtualization boundaries to enhance security through compartmentalization. And that has always been a helpful thing in security, keeping things separated. And this allows us to have a truly secure operating system environment. Tails is another secure operating system designed for maximum privacy, 
ideal for sensitive tasks and it routes all traffic through the Tor network and leaves no trace left behind. And for those looking for a robust set of security tools, Kali Linux is a known favorite. It offers extensive resources for penetration testing and security assessments. Well, we have explored a variety of server operating systems today, each excelling in different aspects of server management and security. Whether you're optimizing for virtual machines, containers, file servers, or security, there are many server operating systems out there to meet your needs. And I know I will have some who watch this video and ask why I didn't cover a particular operating system. Well, keep in mind this list is just a few of what I think are the best server operating systems in 2024 and that I think you should check out. Are there other great operating systems out there that we haven't talked about today? Absolutely. Let me know in the comments what operating systems you prefer for which purposes and why, as I learn as much from you guys and what you find to be helpful. Well, I hope you found something helpful in today's video, maybe an operating system you haven't heard of before or one that we've recommended that you want to try in the home lab environment. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more in-depth tech reviews, tutorials, home lab topics, and just cool stuff. Thanks for watching. Please do stay safe out there. Keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.